I got a phone call one day, and it was uh, a sergeant from the personnel section at, at the hospital, because that's where I was, that was my company, actually, the hospital company. And he said uh, that I was on a levy. And of course, you go, I'm down on a levy. <laughs> but that's not what it meant. It meant that my name was on a list to be sent to Vietnam. And it was like, holy crap, you know, what are you talking about? I only have 10 and a half months. There was no chit chat or anything. My name was on this list and if I'm on the list, I'm going. So they, they set you up for Vietnam orientation uh, training. And it was uh, inept. They show you sucking chest wounds and they show you different different kinds of wounds that you may be expected to encounter um, and I'm saying oh wait but am I not a social worker in my head am I not a social worker but somewhere along the line my MOS was changed to 91B instead of 91G 91 golf was social social work specialist or whatever it was and 91B was combat medic When I was in Delta Company, um, we would see a lot of wounded coming in. I mean, that's what we were there for. And uh, we would triage who was going to be left there in, in our tents and who was going to be going on the evac back to the hospital. Those who were in, uh, in our tents re uh, recuperating would eventually go back to their units and fight another day. Um, when I was in Charlie Company, we had the same type of structure, but with an added structure of we would be going out more with the infantry uh, platoons on patrols. We would sometimes go by chopper, but most times we would go by deuce and a half, the, the trucks. It's not a thrill to do either. It's like, it's, it's interesting to be on a chopper, but it's, it's uh, it's not like, whoopee, we're on a, <laughs> we're on a helicopter, you know? Um, but you wind up sitting on your steel pot because if, you'll learn these things. People say, you know, sit on the pot. And you say, why? And they say, because if the Vietnamese, if Charlie's down there and he shoots up, it'll hit the pot and it won't go up your ass. So you learn these things. It's, it's, uh, and I never, I never saw a guy with a, a bullet up his ass, so, you know. If you were in a uh, firefight, there may be somebody that was wounded. Happened often. Those guys, one of my responsibilities would be to get to him, see what I could see wrong with him. Did he have um, an arm wound? Did he have a belly wound? Did he have a head wound? What was it? And then bring him as far as I could with with the help of my buddies, to a place where he would be uh, out of harm's way while the firefight was going on. Somebody would be calling for an evac, and we would, depending on if it was a hot zone or if, if we uh, took care of whatever the business was that was going on, they would come in, we would put the guys on the litters, onto the, onto the chopper, and away they would go. But we would stay there because our job was not done. Uh, I guess you feel more um, responsible when you're when when you're with your group than when you're with the guys in the um, landing zone in the in the company area. There's more guys working on one person, and the and the MDs are there. It's I'm not an MD, you know, so they're they're there, and they can um, more. Uh, more sufficiently um, diagnose what's going on and they can, they can make the, the life-death uh, decision at that point. You're making it there, it's like, you know. Thinking back, there are, there are more men that are on the wall in Vietnam 
that died because they didn't have as good a medical care as they have now. I mean, a head wound then, depending on how severe it was, was a fatality. Basically, it was a fatality. I mean, you'd be lucky if you if it wasn't, okay? But now, there are guys who get blown up and they get, half their bodies are blown up and they survive it. And I don't know, I don't know what the balance is, whether that's better or worse, well, I just don't know. I am number 175.